G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, that last video I did was a review of a three-piece boring bar set from Banggood. It got 10 out of 10. It was a fantastic little unit. Three boring bars, plus 10 inserts for $13 US. Really well made, worked good. No problem whatsoever, you could not go wrong. Anyway, uh, and also I see Rolling Metal Channel reviewed it just the other day, yesterday actually, and uh, he also thought it was pretty good, very good for the uh, for the money particularly, but overall just a really good set, you know. Anyway, uh, one of my viewers uh, commented and said, uh, would the smaller boring bar, the 7 mil boring bar, because it's a set of 7, 10 and 12 mil, would the 7 fit my little shirt line? And I straight away said, oh yeah, no worries. And then I thought, hmm, I'd better check. I mean, I'd be surprised if it didn't. So anyway, I deleted the, <laughs> that reply and said, I'll go and have a look and let you know. So we'll have a look today. You can come for the ride. I'll just, uh, yeah, see if it lines up to centre and then we'll just try cutting with it. So, hang in there. I have got a very small high speed steel boring bar I would normally use in this. This will spin carbide. I did a video a while back you know, showing that micro lays can use carbide within within reason. All right, well, so we'll try the seven. Um, the only issue, really, I think, would be centre height. As long as you can get correct centre height. If the bars are too big diameter, they'll be too low quite often. So we'll, we'll just put a centre in here. Rather than use the tail stop. It's a bit easier setting up boring bars, this one. With these little micro lathes like Sherlines too, you never want to spin this type of chuck where they don't have pinion gears. You never want to spin these with, without the, the chuck being locked down. Like, don't do it with the jaws just floating loose. They can actually unscrew and possibly the, 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 the jaw could fly out. With a chuck that's got pinion gears, uh, it's unlikely that that will happen because the pinion gears put a certain amount of drag on their jaws but yeah this type of chuck particularly you want to be careful they can they can undo themselves if there's no load on them all right let's come back on this i'll take out the five center we don't need that and we'll see how the little seven mil bar fits Hmm, interesting, interesting, it may not. Hmm, let's see. I mean, you can always shim this up with a block under it if you, uh, you know, it'd be easy to put a black plate under here with a hole in it and just lift it. Let's we'll see what happens. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I think it needs another shim. What have I got? I like these viewer questions because they always bring up issues you don't think of, you know, and then comments is one of the great parts of doing YouTube. You get to interact with lots of really nice people and they bring up issues you, you don't think of yourself. So, uh, yeah, one of the joys of doing YouTube. What have we got here? Let's just uh, see what happens here. Oh yeah, she's way low. She won't need another shim. I'm not sure if she's going to work or not. Hmm, good question. Alright, get another shim. Alright, we're maxed out there. Pretty much. Have a look and see. That it's a tad low. No, 
It's about a mil low. So I'll need to put a washer or something under here, a spacer block. I'll do that. I'll get I'll get out just a flat washer would be all you need. I'll go through my washers and I'll come back. Alright, temporarily we'll just stick a flat washer under there. I mean I'd make up a proper little square block to do this. And we should be able to just uh, you could actually just put some little shim plates under this too, it's another way of doing it. I'll use a washer and it'll be a bit more uh, give better spread. Yeah, so it's just a little bit too low. Whoops, it goes there. Yeah, what have we got? Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, huh, that's perfect. I've never had that off before, I didn't realise I had a centre. Oh, well, there you go. This will be the bee's knees. This will work good. Oh, oh well, this is, uh, I have to add this to my Shoreline uh, to my Sherline toolkit. Right now it's good. Okay, so what have we got now? Now it's high. Now it's a bit high. No, that's okay. I can live with that. Yeah. All right. Now to use this, we'll have to turn this around anyway because it's orientated wrong so I'll have to spin the whole thing around and yeah, we'll shim it up properly all right we won't get too adventurous here I don't want to I mean, too much overhang on this, I think, would be uh, pushing it. We'll just put it about there, I think. That's a reasonable amount of overhang for a little lathe like this. How does that look? Oh, that might pull down. See what she does. It's interesting how these inserts slope down, almost like a, like a, like a negative rake insert, but they're not. They're actually slightly positive. But of course, it gives you more clearance because you've got, you've actually got less of the shaft diameter underneath the, the cutting point. You know, the whole thing is lifted up, so that's why they do it that way. It's. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I have to move it back to this position. We have enough cross light now. Okay, we'll get there. Okay. One be there. That's pretty difficult. And there we're right. Okay. Shelly, be good. A good little girl. All right. Push this out of the way. Now I think we're just about there. Just a bit. A tad high now, still. Yeah, just a fraction. I'll put it. pulls down anymore. It's actually not, not a bad thing to be slightly high when you're centre boring. If you're low, it's bad news because it won't cut properly. But being slightly high isn't a real big deal. Oh, just a smidgen high. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. We'll leave it there anyway, just for now. That's pretty bright, I think. Now we'll put something in there. We'll try that bronze bush, if it will fit. I think it will.
see it's out around this uh, this whole bush, but you can see it's machined this side all right. Hmm. That finish is pretty okay. So yeah, it's certainly usable. Uh, and you can get a six mil as well. The six mil would actually the six mil shank would go straight in. You wouldn't need a spacer. I th I'm pretty sure that would be, bring it right onto centre line. But I mean, putting a washer in there's no big deal. I mean, this is the seven; it works fine, no problem whatsoever. But you can buy the sixes and the sevens separately, and they also do a seven with ten inserts for about thirteen dollars. And you can buy the bar on its own for about four bucks. But then you've got to buy your inserts, so you're really no better off. You might as well get the set with the inserts and save a bit, you know. All right, I'll put a bit of steel in there. We'll we'll test it out a bit more. Yeah, a bit of toilet paper did the, did the trick, stopped all the crap going into the chuck and the spindle. So what's it look like? Mm. Mm, pretty good. Not bad. Okay, well there you have it. So it's all doable. The, uh, the boring bar will fit, but you have to use a spacer. So that's it. Shirley's got a new toy, and uh, yeah, as a as an item for the uh, the toolbox, that's pretty good, I think. All right, that's it for me, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.